What's up, everybody? We're Team Whiff. That's Will and Tiff, but one word so it's easy to remember. We've lived aboard for about four years now, and the boats and the lifestyle have changed over time. So we want to hit you with three quick facts we're noticing about the lifestyle and also give you a whole bunch of thought food to help you plan out how you may want to go about living aboard a boat of your own. So let's dive in. So this video is a little bit longer than what we typically want our Tipsy Tuesday videos to be, but that's because there was just so much information and we wanted to cover it in great detail. Um, there's no one punchline to summarize everything, so if you leave halfway through, then you're really not going to get the full picture. So if you don't have time to, to watch the whole thing now, then maybe I would say save it in your save to watch later videos because this is one that you truly don't want to miss, especially if you're making plans yourself for living on the water. All right, so the first thing we want to bring up is how popular it's becoming to live aboard. I mean, people are finding it's more within their reach than ever before. People young and old are taking to the water, so that's a good thing, right? I mean, I think it's good that people are out living their dreams, um, but uh, I do also think that there's a downside to that. Your competition at finding marinas is going to get tougher. So before the large influx of new live aboards came about over about the past year, I'd say the general public's opinion of live aboards was um, met with mixed reviews, I'd, let's say. <laughs> so we've certainly noticed marinas adding on more restrictions to live aboards and municipalities finding sprouting up new regulations regarding live aboards. And honestly, I think it might get a little worse before it gets any better. The second thing that we wanted to bring up is how certain technology is becoming more reliable and more affordable than ever. I'm talking your solar systems, your lithium batteries, your Wi-Fi and your hotspot boosters, uh, your water makers, and the list goes on and on and on. The majority of boats don't come with this type of equipment, but making these additions are super simple. The tech is cheap, and I think that more people now can benefit from it and it'll open you up to a whole lot of new opportunities without you, um, you know, absolutely roughing it. The knowledge is also readily available to assist you with a learning curve. So the last point is that powerboats especially have so much room to house these technology and equipment, and we're just not taking advantage of it most of the time. It's like we're almost dependent on being tied to the dock and living at a marina, which we get it. I mean, our boat didn't come equipped for living on the hook um, and extended passages uh, like a sailboat or a trawler might already come equipped. But uh, really, we didn't want our boat to be our boat's glory to be confined to the dock space. <laughs> so this is why we wanted to give you a few quick tips and food for thought while you're planning out your liveaboard experience, so that you're not ten steps behind what a new liveaboard might already be. So we told you what folks like us and others have been noticing within the liveaboard community. So with that said ask yourself these questions if you're thinking about living at a marina full-time why is it a luxury or is it a necessity now I know that everyone's answers may differ but um let's let's open up this comment sections right now so everyone can read and uh, learn from each other some folks may need quick access to land some may have jobs that are limiting I know others have children and some people travel a lot some people just need to be uh, need to have good Wi-Fi and good house like amenities so obviously the easiest way to take care of those issues would be to stay at the dock in theory yeah so let me ask that question a couple of different ways I assume that since you're watching this you're planning on living aboard or maybe you just like listening to us blab or both <laughs> So, given your circumstances, could you possibly live on the hook, maybe full-time or even part-time? And on the hook, we're grouping in, you know, mooring field, anchoring out, um, that sort of thing. Are you able to travel at all, or must you remain stationary and localized? Okay, here's what I'm getting at. Our first year, or our first boat time living aboard, we were pretty lame. <laughs> we didn't take the boat out, like, at all. Maybe once, and... That's not counting our trips to the boatyard, which really isn't fun. 
So we, we'd have our neighbors invite us to go places, but we'd politely decline and just say, oh, no, we're good here on the dock. <laughs> and really that's kind of lame. So um, don't do that. Don't be that person. Plan to get out and, and take advantage of other people inviting you places. And uh, yeah, don't be lame. We are not lame. <laughs> we were lame. <laughs> okay, a little bit. We, we were a little lame. She, she's got a point. Living on a boat isn't a big adjustment. It's just step one. And if you're going to plan to live on a boat, then you should truly plan to live this lifestyle to the fullest extent and use your boat as a boat, unless you plan on buying a floating home on a barge. So if you're on the verge of retirement, then you could, you know, obviously start out at like a marina or something like that, get used to the lifestyle, learn your boat and um, upgrade it, upfit it to however you want it. And then, you know, slowly start getting out there. So take us, for example, when we bought this boat, this was our second liveaboard boat. We wanted nothing to do with marinas. So we started, um, we took a month out of marina to get the boat ready for living out on the hook and then bam we jumped straight into the mooring field epic failure <laughs> it was it was kind of a failure um and we did just so happen to find a, a a nice small marina for cheap by chance and that gave us enough time to uh to truly get the boat ready truly learn the boat so that when we jumped back out the second time it was a huge success and we were able to maintain that for a, for a really extended period of time so if living on the hook full time doesn't work, maybe you could do a part time solution, maybe three weeks out on the hook and another week at the marina, just so you can equalize your batteries or top them off, do the maintenance and then get back out there. Now look, the point of this isn't to push you to living out on the hook. We know that that lifestyle will not work for everybody. But I will say that it's a lot more comfy than you may think, especially if you take the time to uh, upgrade your boat for it. So for those of you that know that living off the grid isn't your thing, that's cool. It's totally okay. I mean, you can just plan to maybe switch marinas every now and then or take, spend a weekend doing a small trip. I mean, if you work remotely and you can travel kind of slowly, that works too. Or you can even really do the great loop that way, just kind of at a turtle's pace. <laughs> The biggest point we're trying to stress to future and newbie liverboards is to just get out there by any means necessary. Now let's talk limiting factors, like work. Are you thinking of working full time while living aboard? If so, why? For how long? Could you perhaps work remotely? Could you maybe even work a little less? Or not at all? I'm just saying, maybe another job could do, or maybe you could just work little gigs here and there as you move your way along. Yes, especially if you're prolonging retirement, trying to add a little cushion to your savings. I mean, how much do you think it really takes? Don't spend your whole life planning for a day that never comes, people. Get out there! <laughs> Sorry, that's the nog. Okay, what's next? Um, kids. Kids? <laughs> yeah, kids. Oh. Like, who better than kids than to be ready for a life adventure? I mean, I think that sometimes adults should be more, you know, just carefree and imaginative like kids. So if you're thinking of waiting until your kids are older and out of the house before you maybe want to start cruising and living aboard, why? Matter of fact, wait, 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 wait. Ask your children if they would want to live aboard a boat and travel and see what they say. You might be surprised. <laughs> Look at folks like Sailing Zatara and The Wander and Naps, both YouTube channels. Uh, the Wander and Naps, they are a family of five with three young boys living aboard a trawler and they, they pretty much did it just how we're describing in this video, you know. They, they bought their boat, they fixed it up, they lived the lifestyle at a marina in the Keys. They worked a job to make some extra cushion. And then they, they took off. They're out there, they're in the Bahamas somewhere. I mean, drinking painkillers and eating conch fritters. Like, <laughs> that's that's the ultimate goal. I mean, for, for, for us and a lot of people is to become international cruisers. 
and they're doing just that with their children and it seems like they're having a great time make sure you check out their channel if you haven't already and their two cats definitely <laughs> shout out to cheddar and tiger <laughs> sometimes you need a good old shake up to your thought process and that's essentially what we're trying to do here just give you like a little A little boop on the head because you know it's hard it's hard enough planning everything involved and living aboard and sometimes we sell ourselves short of the things that we truly deserve and I think that if you're watching this video you truly deserve to live the life out on the water that you desire and if you agree why don't you go ahead and boop, <laughs> poke that like button to let us know that uh, you support the cause even you folks out there watching on the TV who can't see the links that we post like this one above you can give this video a thumbs up too um, but yeah like I'm saying sometimes it's not the circumstances that hold us back it's your mindset so with everything we've said in mind have you already considered these things or accounted for it when planning to live aboard could you work around some of your personal limitations to get on the water sooner why do you think so many people are prolonging their dream of living aboard until their life is like somehow perfectly aligned for it or even better let us know if you've been there done that you are living your dream out on the water and we're just preaching to the choir but you're watching anyways because you like the way that uh, my beard moves when I talk <laughs> we're so strange no just you <laughs> again people pour through these comments looking for others opinions experiences and insights so let's open these comments up so that we can you know talk to each other and bounce ideas back and forth from one another and to those who could use them so the last thing we want to cover is probably the most important thing and it's the cheap boats that you see advertised online as being perfect liveaboards or liveaboard ready and they're everywhere and their prices are pretty cheap. <laughs> I mean you could get one for a grand or less even. So if you're thinking of buying one of those kind of boats and letting them sit in their final resting place. Just... Just don't. <laughs> Let those boats die. There are too many seaworthy boats at all price points, even even a grand or less. Like we said earlier, you should want to move around on your boat unless obviously you have a floating house on the barge. Uh, and except for those planned and unplanned maintenance setbacks, your boat should always be in serviceable, seaworthy condition. Anything less than that is a liability to yourself and others and it's one by one adding negative outlook to our community as a whole. So if you're planning on living on a derelict boat with no intentions on getting it running, why? You are quickly going to outgrow that, I promise you. So don't do it. Plan for your future adventures now and also with uh, you know upgrades and additions to your boat. Now if you're saying to yourself, whatever, I'll just buy one of these temporarily until I'm ready to move about and then I'll get something else, you know, just, just stay on land, okay? I mean, it, it is what it is but it's not normal for someone to live in a van and that doesn't run in your parking lot so please don't normalize that at marinas and anchorages it'll only make everyone else's dream of living on the water that much harder as these landlubber politicians try to use regulations as a solution so the only exception to this I think would be is if you live in a area that doesn't have affordable housing readily available or you've just fallen on hard times and this is the best solution you have to put a roof over your head, then by all means disregard what we've just said and do what you gotta do. But if that isn't your situation, then just make sure you're buying a seaworthy boat or at least one that you're working towards getting seaworthy. Okay, so that's a lot of things to rethink, so let's let that resonate. Yeah, we'll let that, we'll let that marinate season a little bit. Again, I just want to thank all of our new subscribers who are new to the channel. I know we got a lot of folks in from our last video about the things that we hate about living aboard. Um, so thanks. That shows us that the support was mostly positive in spite of the fact that we got hammered on Facebook with negative comments. It was very surprising. If you haven't seen our video about the things that we hate about living aboard, I will link it above or at the end of the video. I got you, TV peeps. <laughs> also heard your message loud and clear about the insurance topic. So as we speak, I'm working on the material for that video and I'm also going to do one better. I know that one of the biggest issues that I've seen in the online forums 
are people who really don't have many options or they don't know where to shop for insurance. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together a master list of insurance companies, insurance agencies, and brokers to really just give people a solid base of places to shop for insurance and to do your annual quoting because you definitely should be quoting every year. If you enjoyed this video, there's plenty more where that came from. So feel free to like this video or subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also, if you know someone who may find this information useful, share it with them so we can help them get their mind right so they can step out of the box. Until next time, remember that life doesn't wait and neither should you. So get out there. Yeah, and get lost. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs>